Hi and welcome to another video. I hope you're doing okay. This time I would like to have a look with you into equitable package and deep dive into it. But first of all let's see what kind of a problem this package is trying to solve. And this metadata here already says everything. A Dart package that helps to implement value-based equality without needing to explicitly overwrite equals equals and hash code. In Dart we have this equals and equals operator and we don't have for example the free equals operator like in other languages and also the Dart language does not generate as these methods out of the box like for example in Kotlin you have data classes. If so there are different ways to handle the equality in Dart. First of all we can manually overwrite these methods the hash code method and operator equals equals like they show you over here. Secondly we can use this equitable package which will simplify it for us and the third option is to use a package like freeze which will generate code for us. So when we freeze our object it will also generate us the equal and copy with solutions out of the box. Alright but this time we're talking about the equitable package and the equitable package does not handle any code generation. So down here you can see how to use this package. First of all you have to add equitable to your dependencies then of course get the packages and then finally in order to use equitable you have to extend the equitable class and finally you have to override this props getter over here and give it a list of all your properties that you want to be taken into account of in the equation when you try to compare the two objects. Then we have a couple of other things in this library so it also can generate for you a to string implementation and in order to do that you can use the stringify method like shown over here and finally if you have some object that is extended by another object already then instead of extending equitable you can use this equitable mixing over here and this is how it looks like and also you can see here a slightly bigger props getter with lots of different arguments given for the comparison so this is the introduction to the library and how to use this library and now let's go into the code. Here is the equitable github repository and let's jump straight into the lib directory. Inside here we have a barrel file equitable.dart and we can see that exported are this equitable.dart, config and mixin and we will look into all of them. Then in the source directory we have basically only four files and first of all we have this equitable.dart. So equitable is an abstract class and it has this list of properties over here which is a list of nullable properties actually. And then we have over here the stringify. Next we are overriding the equals equals operator. So when you are extending this class then you will get the operator overridden over here in the parent class. And then what happens inside of it? First we check identical whether current object and the other object are identical. So what identical does? This is a function that is coming from Dart and it checks whether the two variables that you provided to it are looking into the same point in the memory. Both of the variables have a reference to an object and if they are holding a reference to the same point in the memory that means that this object is identical. And then in case it is not identical and so we have two different objects in two different places in the memory then we have to actually check the properties of these objects to compare whether they are equal. So what we do is First we check whether the other object is also equitable because if it's not equitable, if it's not extending this class then we already will know that it's not equal. Then we also compare the runtime types because the two objects they can both implement equitable but they may have different runtime types and if they have different runtime types then they are not equal. And finally if all, both these checks came to true then we have this equals method called here with all the properties. Then we have this hash code method and this hash code first takes a hash code on runtime type then we do xor and we call this map props to hash code method or function which is coming from somewhere else and we pass properties to it and finally we also overwrite this to string method and this is what the stringify is for so if the stringify is set to true that means that we want to also generate a nice readable to string and this is what this map props to string will do for us if it's set to false then we will just return the runtime type which is the default behavior for Dart. And finally in the default you can see also we have this equitable config stringify. So in case that this stringify was not set so it was null because stringify ha can have three different states so true, false and null. Then we check whether we have set this config which is um, like a general setting for all equitable classes. 
And if yes, and if it's true, then again, we print the nice um, text, otherwise we print the runtime type. Therefore, let's go to equitable config. And equitable config is the last thing that we've seen in the previous file. It doesn't have anything more than the stringify. So we have here a setter for stringify, which just sets the value, and it has a getter over here. And the field itself is defined down here, and it's static. So then in the getter there are a couple of things happening as well. First of all, we check whether stringify is null. And if it's null, then in debug over here, we set it to true. So in case of debug, if you didn't say either the config or stringify on a class that is extending equitable, then in debug mode you will get a nice print out to the lock. But in production, instead, you will get false. Because in case this is null, then false will be returned over here. Well, let's look into equitable utils, because that's where all the other functions are defined. So over here we have this map props to hash code function, which is calling some finish function. And then we can see if we don't have any properties, so properties are null, we are returning zero over here as a parameter to finish. Otherwise, we're using fault on the iterable because props as it is iterable, so it can handle the list that we have, but also other types. And then we are folding it by using this combine function over here. So let's scroll down, and here we have the combine function. And here you have a small note over here that is basically an implementation of Jenkins hash functions. And if you're interested, just visit this Wikipedia link. Otherwise, I think this is a topic for another video. And then down here you have the finish function. And, and inside of the finish function, we just continue with our bitwise operations to make sure that the hash code will be different for every set of properties. Then down here you have also this map props to string, which is printing us some nice string with all the properties. You can see that we return a string over here with random type, and then we are mapping through all of the fields and we are joining them. So thanks to that we will have all the properties printed with the two string on them. So in case we have another equitable within properties that also will have like a cascading effect over here, everything will be printed. Okay, but let's scroll to the top over here because we also have this equals function over here defined. And notice one more thing, we have this equality, which is a deep collection equality. This is coming, this class is coming from the Dart mm, libraries as well. And with this thing, you can check whether two collections are equal to each other, list or maps or other collections. So then the equals function over here, it takes the two lists, will be the, which will be the two lists of parameters. And at the beginning, we are taking case of all the edge cases, all the possibilities where we can skip going through a for loop later on. So first of all, we check again identical, which we already done before, but this is done again here. And if the two lists are identical, then we return true. Secondly, if both lists are null, then we are returning false. So keep in mind over here, if you have null in two equitable objects that um, don't have any properties, so just the props getter is set to null, then it will return you false. Then we are checking also the length of the list, and of course if the length of the properties is different from both of the list, then we are returning false. Now when we went through all of these ifs over here, then we have a for loop, where we finally go through all of the fields. So we take both of the properties, they can be of varied types, so they are set as dynamic over here. We check if both of them are equitable, so if they are extending the equitable abstract class, then that means that we can use this not equals operator, which is also in implement, which also will use the equals equals operators under the hood. And then, if both of them are not extending the equitable class, then we have another if, and we check if they are either iterables or a map. In that case, we are using this equality class over here, which is the deep collection equality, and we do an equals, which is the deep um, equals check on the two unit 1 and unit 2, the two iterables or maps in this case. And then finally, if we are not dealing either with iterable of or a map, then we are also checking the runtime types. And if the runtime types of these two fields are different, then of course we are not having an equality and we return false. And in the end, if we know that we are dealing with the same runtime on both fields, then we can check whether the two fields, the primitive fields, so for example two ints, are exactly the same or not. If not, we return false. Finally, when we checked all pairs of properties and nothing failed us, nothing returned false over here, then we can re return true and that means that we are equal. Finally, let's quickly have a look into the equitable mixin, which is the last file left over here. 
Over here we have very similar implementation to the equitable class. So we have props getter, we have stringify getter, and we also have an implementation of equals equals, hash code and to string, which are exactly the same like in the equitable class. Just instead of extending the equitable class, we can use the mixin equitable mixin. I hope this helped you understand a little bit what this package does and how it works under the hood. If so, please like this video, subscribe and I code you to death and I will see you the next time. Bye bye.